Uh, well, my name's Ted Briggs. I'm originally from Michigan. Uh, grew up there and uh, uh, went to Michigan State. Uh, started after that, started home brewing, and uh, I've been a brewer for about 20 years now. So. Yes, I, I actually remember exactly because uh, back then there wasn't the craft brews there is now. So to get good beer, it was like usually went for imported stuff, and I really liked uh, Newcastle Brown Ale. So I actually went into the homebrew shop and said I want to make Newcastle Brown Ale. Nice. And uh, I went in there, and it actually came out really good, like I wanted it. So I kind of got hooked, and it wasn't until the third or fourth batch where I screwed up. But I was already hooked, because I knew, wait a minute, I can make good beer. I just did something wrong this time. Whereas a lot of people who like get those homebrew kits for Christmas, they make one crappy beer and then they throw it in the garage and never do it again, you know, yeah, so yeah. 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 I was pretty much hooked once I started home brewing. And there was a very active club in the Philadelphia area in that time, had over 200 members. So started hanging out with them and stuff, you know, and so um, there was a few really good brewers uh, and uh, quite a few that went pro. The last time the Craft Brewers Conference was in Philly, um, a bunch of people got together at Home Sweet Homebrew and took a picture, and there was over 20 guys that started at Home Sweet Homebrew that are now professionals. Once I started homebrew and I knew I wanted to be a brewer, I'm like, well, I couldn't find a job right away, but then I started, I was bartending and then also working at a beer store. So I was getting that kind of retail experience and the experience of working behind a bar. So, yeah, so he knew I wanted to get into the business and I got a job there as an assistant. I actually, before that, I was actually working for free on Saturdays just to try and get my foot in the door. So I guess that's, uh, that's what I really did. Got my uh, brewing diploma through the American Brewers Guild. And uh, then after that, I uh, started a series of uh, moving to different venues, you know, so. I think I've worked a total of eight or nine different places. Uh, a long stint actually in uh, Atlantic City, New Jersey uh, for the Tun Tavern Brewing Company. Um, worked a bit for Flying Fish. They're, they're fairly big now in, in New Jersey. And um, then after I, uh, working out on the East Coast for a while, went up to Northern New York. Uh, and then after that, uh, kind of wanted to do something different and actually went out to Wyoming for about four years. So uh, that was really nice. Really loved living out there. But then after that, I did a, a, a operations director down in um, Baton Rouge for Tin Roof. Uh, and then after that, went up to Milwaukee and uh, did a startup, uh, designed and installed a, a brewery in Milwaukee. I was there for about two years uh, before I came up to Fitgers here. I would say is, uh, well, one of them would be choice and change. Uh, you got to give people a, a decent amount of choice, but then you also got to change it up to keep them interested. Um, but I, I think I might be a little old fashioned um, in that I'm all about drinkability. Um, I'm not going to do something just because it's trendy or cool. First and foremost, it's got to be a drinkable beer, right? Uh, you know, I won't say the name, but you know, the brewery putting lobster in their beer or whatever these people are doing, that's not really me, you know, because the first thing I'm going to look at when I'm formulating recipe is it's going to be good drinkable beer. I have no problem with getting inventive. But um, yeah, it's, at the end of the day, it's, it's got to be drinkable. Maybe not for everybody, but you know, it's got to be a decent uh, drinkable beer. You know, one thing that we're doing sort of now is we have a small barrel program, and I, I really like barrel aged beers. So hopefully, we'll be expanding that in the future. Um, we just put on a couple really good sours out of the sour program, a Flanders Red and a uh i don't know the other sour is it's hard to it's not it doesn't fit a specific style it's like a really good tart riesling you know it almost i i think you could sell to any wine drinker you know so 
although it's it's completely different than a lot of beers other people are making you know it's it's very drinkable it's very good and that's what i want to look for um you know we're not going to make 30 day sours you know our sours are going to be aged in barrels and you know have a lot of forethought put into them you know there were uh on the barrel other bar end of the barrel age you know i want to do a lot more like that you know your imperial stouts uh, barley wines and stuff like that and look into um i would like to at least release a different barrel age every quarter you know if uh if not more than that you know so uh we'll of course that's going to take two or three years to grow you know if we start it now you know we'll be putting out those beers in a couple years so um and i guess i would describe myself i'm kind of like half german and half uk english mixed and um so i like to say that i brew like a, a german brewmaster but i drink like an irishman so <laughs> i just look forward to um you know keeping keeping everything that's great about about the brew house and hopefully i can add to it and and you know make it even better nice yeah. nice